Hello everybody and welcome to the Fancy Sip Review. Today on the Fancy Sip Review I'm going to be trying Heirloom Black Cherry by Beacon Skiff. If you do not know what Beacon Skiff is, it is a central New York based apple orchard that's been around for a while. Now Beacon Skiff is popular with families as you can go there and pick apples with your kids. It's popular with young couples and you can bring your significant other there and pick apples. But it's also popular with elder emo people because they've been bringing in a lot of old 90s and 2000s emo groups. Recently, Bright Eyes has performed Dashboard Confessionals, Death Cab for Cutie, and for some reason, The Front Bottoms. Now, Heirloom has branched out to different types of uh, products to sell. They sell 1911, which is named after when Beacon Skiff was founded in 1911. And it is an alcoholic cider line. Although once uh, weed became legalized in New York recreationally, they started this line Heirloom, which is their uh, marijuana line of THC-infused products, but also they sell weed. Now, Beacon Skiff currently doesn't have much competition with these weed beverages, especially in New York. Their main competitor is No Wave with Weed Water. Now, the difference between Weed Water and No Wave, or Weed Water and Heirloom, is that Heirloom is essentially a uh, one to one, five milligram to THC to five milligrams of CBD. And what you're getting mostly is you're going to be getting sparkling water. Weed water is 10 milligrams of THC, but only 2 milligrams of CBD. What you're getting with weed water is you're going to be getting just water with terpenes in it. Now, the names of the drinks are also different. With Heirloom, you're going to be getting a flavored sparkling water name. Again, this flavor is going to be the Black Cherry. I have reviewed their lemonade, which was the tastiest thing I've ever had in my life, but it did have a lot of sugar in it. With Weed Water, you are just getting uh, a strain name. I've reviewed the Gelato. I've reviewed the uh, San Fernando Valley OG as well as the uh, uh, Pineapple Express. Now, I only had the lemonade of this brand. So we're going to have to see how this compares not only to Weed Water, but their own product of uh, the lemonade. I mean, everybody says the lemonade is the greatest thing that they sell, which after trying it, I can't doubt that. Now, with the two different groups of marketing and advertising, you're getting two different products in terms of weed water and no wave. Or weed water, I keep making this mistake. Weed water and heirloom. Heirloom is going to be more so for people who enjoy sparkling waters like LaCroix and people that are trying to find a, a light refreshing replacement for something like White Claw and with Weed Water it's just going to be a higher THC percentage beverage that's going to get you much higher. Now Heirloom does have a secondary line called Heirloom Up which is a higher THC percentage product but currently it's not sold in their beverage forms for some reason. I can see these two different uh, companies having two different types of demographics that they're going to be going for. Again, I think that Heirloom is going to be more targeted towards young families, and I think that No Wave is more so going to be targeted towards uh, people more experienced with THC that know more about terpenes and uh, what strains they like. And this will be more of a product for people who want a flavored sparkling water replacement to LaCroix that will be THC infused instead of, you know, alcohol. With all of that said, I've given a lot of uh, backstory on who Beacon Skiff is in their 1911 brand as well as their new heirloom brand. I think that I'm going to crack this, give this a try, let you know how this tastes, compare it both to No Wave Weed Water, but also compare it to their Lemonade their cream of the crop, as the macho man Randy Savage would say.
Now I think before I let me redo that. So before I review the beverage, I think I'm going to list the nutrition facts as I normally do. One serving size is 12 ounces at 25 calories. You're getting nothing but five carbohydrates, 2% of your daily amount, four grams of sugar with no additional sugar. In terms of what the ingredients of this are, you're just getting filtered water, cherry juice, concentrate, cannabis extract, natural cherry flavor, ascorbic acid, and carbonation. The processing type is ethanol extraction and distillation. So here is the can. Now, what also is important to note is when you buy these kind of products, they do have QR codes. When you scan the QR codes, it tells you the actual percentage of stuff in this beverage. Now, although this is listed at 5 milligrams, it's almost closer to 6 milligrams when you scan that QR code, which is bizarre to me because it feels like they're using 4 locos uh, ruling of going from 12% to 14 to 13.9, where it's just a generalized number and what they're aiming for. Here is what the front of the can looks like. The can is showing what looks like kind of clip art shapes of clouds and a circle and a flag of some sort that is purple, a lighter shade of maybe pink and black. It says black cherry, cannabis infused sparkling water, 5 milligrams THC, 5 milligrams CBD. It's nothing that unique about the can. But when you do scan the barcode, it's going to ask you when this drink expires. That's going to be your information on uh, what is in the actual product. Now I've wasted enough time. Let's give this a review. So on the nose, you are getting a very strong black cherry smell. Black cherry personally is one of my favorite f uh, flavors of sparkling water. I enjoy getting the Wegmans brand sparkling water black cherry flavor. Although my favorite uh, seltzer is going to be, or not seltzer, sparkling water is going to be the LaCroix coconut flavor. With that said, this smells exactly like what I would want. It does have much more of a black cherry smell to it that doesn't have as much carbonated smell as you would get with the Wegmans line of sparkling water. So I'm hoping that this has more flavor. I mean, it does at 25 calories, so it must have something in it. It does also have a small amount of sugar. Now on the palate, uh, I don't know if this is caused due to the black cherry extract or the black cherry flavoring or if this is just like how THC infused beverages are with a uh, very small amount of sugar. The mouthfeel of this is very strong, potent with a uh, carbonation type taste but also with the marijuana despite the fact that this does have this does have cherry in it. Let me just reread this. Cherry juice concentrate is the second ingredient after filtered water. There is carbonation in this. Uh, it, it, is, it is a very potent uh, tasting drink. Try this one more time. I will say that a lot of the uh, f the flavoring of the mouthfeel that is heading closer towards the sweetness of the black cherry comparatively to the weed uh, tasting, it seems as it's more based on the nose than it is on the actual palate. A lot of the base notes that you're getting of this is kind of a skunky taste with 
a very, very bitter cherry. I, I don't know what I was expecting with the cherry. I thought it was going to be a bit sweeter, but I don't really know what the big difference between a black cherry and a regular cherry is. This does have a very bitter taste to it. I was, was hoping more so for a sweet cherry. Try this again. This is what the beverage looks like as well. Usually I would have shown this earlier. It does have a very distinct kind of purplish red color. Heading more towards like a maroon type color. See, it's, it's very maroon. It does look a lot like the coloring of the heirloom on the can. I will also note that the aftertaste of this, the, the dry down period, as they would say in Cologne, it, it, it lingers for a long time. But it also is leaving kind of a, uh, like a phlegmy taste in my mouth. Now, comparing this to the, the weed water, because I'm just going to start off with a comparison to the weed water, is you are getting 12 ounces rather than 7.5 ounces. However, you are only getting 5 milligrams of THC. Now, some people do want lower percentages, or not lower, lower milligrams of THC. People that are more new to these kind of drinks, as well as people that are going to plan on drinking more of these. Comparing the cost of $5 to $7 for 10 milligrams, you're, you're getting a better deal with the weed water. Now, I don't know if it's the flavoring situation not being sweet as I was hoping with the lemonade. I think starting off with their best flavor was kind of a bad decision, but I think that the earthy taste of the weed waters are kind of more uh, tasty than this. I think that this just has too too bitter of a taste for me. I mean... If I'm going to be drinking just weed water, I would rather it taste like earthy notes like mint or anything else, honestly, like a lemon or something like that. This has a very bitter taste that kind of maybe would go better with like a steak or something like that. Maybe if I were to pair this like a sommelier with something that would go better. I think that my opinion of this would be better than just drinking this plain, but... I think in terms of taste, I'll be giving this a a 7 out of 10, which 7 is a passing rate. I think that the flavor is not terrible. I do think that I'm, I'm kind of let down based on the review of the lemonade. I do hope that Heirloom does start selling more THC-infused beverages that are more sweet. But with that said, it's, 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 a, it's a shame that the lemonade is so tasty. And it's a shame that they don't currently have the heirloom up yet. I think that these are more interesting for me than just THC-infused gummies. Now, if you were to buy an heirloom gummy, you could buy 10-pack of it at 10 milligrams for $30. So you're spending $3 each on each gummy comparatively to the beverages, which are $5. Although you do have to take into consideration this does cost more to manufacture. They have to put these in cans. In some states, they have to put these in different types of cans, but I mean, these can only be sold in New York as dispensaries can only sell New York products. But I'll, I'll just finish this off, give my final thoughts, and tell you just if you should buy this or not. Do you know what I would compare this to after finishing this? Which is going to be both a positive and a negative. I think that the closest comparison to the heirloom line beverages is that of Spindrift, which is a higher tier sparkling water beverage that actually uses the fruits or whatever the flavoring is of it. Now, personally, I despise Spindrift, and I think it's the grossest tasting energy drink. But I do have to give props to Heirloom. Now, the quality of this is much higher than that of a LaCroix 
or your generic store-bought sparkling water. But personally, this is the fancy sipper's opinion only, I don't really like these kind of sparkling waters in which they have the actual fruit infused in it. Now, when I did review the Pineapple Express, I compared it to going to a hotel lobby and uh, drinking the, the flavored water that they have when you're waiting to check in. This kind of tastes like that, but it tastes, it tastes kind of different in a, in a bitter way. You're not really getting as much of a refreshing taste. I think if I were to drink a few of these, I would also need water with me to wash down the phlegm that I currently have. But I do think that people other than me will really like this product. I personally only dislike this product because it reminds me too much of Spindrift, my most hated sparkling water brand. I think that these are more these are relatively affordable at five dollars although again i do think that the cost per unit of the gummies is higher since you're also getting more thc but this is definitely a good starting area for newcomers to uh, thc infused beverages if you are at a uh, dispensary and you have to choose between the heirloom or the weed water i think that you should you should go for the heirloom honestly However, if you are more interested in like partying or something like that, I think that the weed water would probably give you a better feeling. This is going to be more relaxing. I also do like in their descriptions of their uh, their product, they have grounded and, and uh, up being their description on 5 milligrams and 10 milligrams of THC. With all of that said, I think this is a very passable beverage. I think that it is very bitter for a uh, THC-infused beverage. Like, I'm going to have to drink water after drinking this. But I do think that this is a very good uh, beverage. I am more excited for New York State to start opening up companies that sell THC infused beverages that are more in lines of like a cola or a root beer sadly it's going to be grape sodas and orange sodas which I've reviewed countless times but thank you so much for watching this video I hope you learned a lot I learned a lot because I haven't had a weed infused seltzer before that was a new thing for me to try I have reviewed a lot of weed waters but have not reviewed a seltzer Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you learned a lot and cheers. Goodbye.